Hey guys, it's Aurora with Lavender Hazelwood. Um, oh, honestly, I'm feeling a little weird today. <laughs> a little weird the last couple days, and the last thing I want to do is make a video, but that's precisely why I'm doing it, is to get through the sort of like crummy feelings that I'm having right now. And don't ask me what they're about. It's about a jumble of things in my mind and feeling a little bit I think listless and loneliness and purposeless, which is why this video is important. So, <sighs> um, okay, so I've got a new setup. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm trying something new. That's another thing. Thanks, Will, for your input and inspiration on putting this all together. Um, so, uh, so today I want to talk about uh, calendula salve, or salve, as some people call it. And um, if you don't know what a salve or salve is, it is um, like almost like a body butter that you would rub into your skin. It's made out of oil and usually beeswax, or you can use soy wax, and you can add uh, shea butter in it too if you like. Calendula is a sunny flower. It's yellow. And um, it's associated with like the sun. So vitality, good health, uh, peace. So these are the kinds of things you can charge your ingredients for. I am charging it with a sunny disposition and relaxation and happiness. Calendula is particularly good at helping the skin cells regrow. So, I have, I don't, you probably, I don't know if you can tell, but especially this hand is super, super chapped. Um, you can see the lines and stuff there with like dirt from being out in the garden, um, sort of embedded in my hands, it's pretty gross. So I decided to make a salve. And calendula is really good for the skin, as I said. You can use it for bruises, bites, wounds, rashes, all kinds of stuff and it helps heal things a little bit faster. So I, my, my goal is to heal my hands, but my other goal is to use it on my cat Jack because he has a cancer wound that I've been trying to heal for the last couple of months and it is at the very last bit and, um, and I wanna see if this will help speed up the healing. So that's my intention going into making this particular salve. This particular herb is super safe. You can use it on little humans. You can use it on your cats, your dogs. If you do add essential oil to it to make it smell different, um, which I'm not putting in this version at all, um, but if you want to put essential oils in, you can, but be sure that your essential oil is compatible to your familiar or fur baby because essential oils are really strong and they can do some damage to your, your animals, especially cats. Cats are super, super sensitive to a lot of essential oils. I mean, ones that you think would be completely fine, like lavender, you don't wanna use on a cat. So, you know, so do your research. I'll leave some links in the description box below so you can have a look and see, you know, what you might wanna stay away from. But that's my little PSA about our, our fur babies. <laughs> I'm always on the lookout for them. So. Um, let's see. So what you're going to need is a cup of calendula oil. And if you don't have any on hand, it's pretty easy to make. So you just want to get calendula flowers, which are the top parts, clearly the top parts of the plant. <laughs> um, and you're going to want to dry them. Or you can buy them store-bought. I bought mine store-bought at the local co-op. You're going to take the flower petals or the flower heads and put them in, in a jar. And then you're going to fill up the jar with uh, oil of your choice. I would recommend using organic olive oil um, only because for therapeutic uses and, you know, you're putting stuff on your skin, it's really important, especially if it's going to go in somebody's mouth, like a cat's mouth or a dog's mouth. You want to make sure it's something they can digest or ingest. Um... You could use something like, uh, I don't know, apricot oil or grapeseed oil if you wanted, but those are more used for cosmetic use, like body scrub or something, over like a therapeutic use. So where was I? 
<laughs> yes. So you'll you'll so you'll put your calendula flowers in your jar. You're gonna top it off with your oil, uh, about an inch or two above, and then you're gonna let it sit and put it in a sunny window for like four weeks three to four weeks. I did four weeks. And then you can take it out and you can strain the oil. So what you're gonna need if you're in that process, if you have your oil finished and you need to strain the oil out, um, what you're gonna need is some kind of sieve, not sieve, screen, <laughs> cooking screen, it doesn't matter. Um, you can also use cheesecloth or, um, or muslin if you have that. A tablespoon of shea butter, which is optional, you don't have to use shea butter, um, a quarter cup of beeswax, or you can use soy wax. And then those are your, bit, your ingredients, unless you're gonna be adding essential oil into it. So what you wanna do is take a clean jar, or you can use a bowl, like a Pyrex bowl if you like, and we're gonna be creating a double boiler situation. So if you don't have a double boiler, um, then we're gonna create the equivalent of so take your jar or your bowl, you're going to put your, your screen over it or your muslin or your cheesecloth, and then you're going to pour the oil over your screen and then wait for it to drip out. And then, um, and then you're going to take that jar or that bowl and you're going to put it in a pot that has a little bit of water in it, like, I don't know, an inch or two of water in it. Actually, probably more like two inches. So you're going to put your jar in a pot of low simmering water. You don't want it to boil. You just want it to heat enough so that everything melts together. And then you're going to stir in your wax. And you can leave aside about a tablespoon. So you're gonna use half your wax, essentially. Um, you're gonna stir that in and then your, if you're using shea butter, then you're going to put in your tablespoon of shea butter. At this point, you stir clockwise towards you to bring something towards you. So I was imagining Jack in my hands, happy instead of angry, and at peace with the way things are. And I was chanting in my mind, release peace, release peace, as I was stirring. Once everything is melted, you want to take a little dollop of your oil, put it on a plate, stick it in the freezer for a couple minutes and then pull it out and you can kind of see what your the consistency of your your salve is going to be um so you can decide if you want to add the rest of your beeswax into the salve or not i felt fine so i didn't add the rest but you can if you like once you've stirred in all of your beeswax you can turn off the heat and at this point you would put in your essential oil if that's what you were going to use so at this point you can pull out whatever container or containers you're gonna use to put your salve in and you pour the oil into the containers. I like to reuse containers that I already have. And then you just wait for the salve to set. <clears throat> and voila! I'll also leave instructions in the description box below on how to make this and uh, what else? What else did I wanna say? <laughs> Uh, I can't remember. So if you have any questions, let me know. Let me know how this works for you. If, um, if you want to make a double strength calendula oil, you can make the oil and then you can strain out the calendula flowers and then do a whole new batch with that same oil. So it would take you about two months to make the oil instead. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you want, have any tips on how you make salves, I would love to, to hear about them. And uh, I hope you have an awesome day. Oh, uh, <laughs> if you like the video, consider subscribing or giving it a thumbs up. I would totally appreciate it. And uh, I hope you have an awesome week. Toodles. <laughs>